Well, good morning. I'm Babette Russell with uh, Come Home A Better Homes and Garden Real Estate, and I'm today I'm here with um, Drew Wack from Un uh, Federal United Credit Union, and we were going to talk to, back to you about the importance of getting your ducks in a row. So like when you're getting ready to go buy a home, what is important and what are the first things that you need to do when you get ready to start looking? So Drew, can you, one of the first things is a pre-approval. So Drew, can you tell me the importance about getting a pre-approval so that when you're getting ready to go look at houses and, and open houses, how that helps you, how, what kind of strength that gives you? Absolutely. You know, the pre-approval or pre-qualification process is a very integral part of getting set up for being able to buy a home. With the pre-approval, when you're sitting down with a lender, you're able to look at many factors from credit scores to qualification to amounts you can qualify for home purchases. So you're really honing in on all of those different aspects to make sure that you are set up for buying the home. It uh, allows you to see if there's things you need to do in order to improve your position for buying a home, such as maybe your credit score might be a little bit lower and there are a few things you can do to achieve a higher credit score in order to qualify for a better interest rate. How would you go about doing something like that? So some of them are very simple. Some of them are things that you may not have been aware of, like if there was a medical collection for a past bill that you weren't aware of and paying that off can actually improve your credit score. Other simple things like your credit card debt. You may be carrying a slightly higher balance on a credit card at the time that your credit report was run and paying down a couple hundred dollars extra on a credit card bill can actually boost your credit score. But being able to see what's going on with your credit and knowing where it's at allows you to work on those things so that you can improve it and qualify for better interest rates because interest rates on home loans are very heavily dependent on credit scores. Okay, so um, okay, um, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Let me get back to this. <laughs> uh, today is not a matter of what. Can you um, share with us what you believe to be the importance? Oh wait, there is. What? I don't think they edit this out really good. Um, maybe she doesn't. Really Oh, oh yeah, what are your credit score requirements? Like when you have, you have different kinds of loans. We have conventional loans, FHA, VA, and, and RD. And um, so what is like, do we have an ideal credit score for, is each one different? What is? Yeah, actually they all can be different. Most of them, especially like the conventional, usually rely on a 620 credit score or higher. FHA, VA rural development can go down as low as 600. There's also in-house financing or what we call portfolio loans and those vary depending on the specific type of loan on what that credit score requirement is. And so sitting down with a mortgage lender for that pre-qualification process allows you to see everything and allows them to evaluate what loans you qualify for. And that makes a big difference in how much you can qualify for a lot of times too, which is a big thing that your realtor is going to need to know when you're shopping for homes. So basically, the better your credit score, the better interest rate you're gonna get? You hit the nail on the head, absolutely. Okay. You know, credit scores are one of the main deciding factors when it comes to interest rates. There's other factors like the type of loan you're looking at, whether it's a fixed rate or an adjustable rate mortgage or an FHA loan, but the credit score is an underlying factor on all interest rates on all loans. So knowing where you stand on that and if there's room for improvement and things you can do for that credit score is a big factor in where your interest rate is going to be at when you qualify for those loans. So when you talk about um, portfolio loans or we'll call them in-house loans, are those what people are calling arms? And can you tell us what arms are and what it actually means? Because I, I always refer to it as arms yeah. and I know it has. You're right. So the standard loans that we all know about are the conventional, the FHA, the VA, and the rural development loans. Mm -hmm. Then you have your arm loans, which are adjustable rate mortgages. And adjustable rate mortgage means that that interest rate is locked for a certain period of time, but then after that period of time, that interest rate can fluctuate depending on where interest rates are in the market. So an example would be a 3-1 arm. 
So the three means that the interest rate is locked for three years and cannot change. And then after that, the one means it can change once per year, every year after that initial lock period. And then each, it can only change so many points That's each year. Correct. Can't like go, they can't go skyrocket. Right. There, there is a cap on each individual a arm loan. Generally that cap is 2%. And the way it adjusts is, like I said, based on where the interest rate is at the time of the adjustment period. So if interest rates are higher than what your interest rate is, your interest rate can go up, up to 2%. If interest rates are lower, your interest rate can actually come down. Okay, so you have, so like say example, you have somebody who has a, a, an arm, so you're watching it and then what they really wanna do is when the interest rates are the best, and if they're still eligible, to lock that rate in with you're you. 100%. The big advantage of the arm is that interest rates on an arm loan are typically lower than a fixed rate or an FHA or VA or rural development loan. And so the advantage there is you can lock in a lower interest rate for that three, five or seven year period and be able to ride out the current market that has a little bit more volatility and higher interest rates so that you can get to a point where you can refinance that into a fixed low interest rate. Usually what we do on the lending side is we set what's called a spike rate. Mm -hmm. So the spike rate is your target interest rate that you want to get to. So if a conventional rate is 6.25% and the 3-1 arm rate is a 5%, you're coming in at 1.25% lower than that conventional loan. And then we might set a spike rate of 4% as what you ultimately want to get to for your low interest rate. I, as your lender, then watch your loan over that period of time, and when interest rates drop to 4%, I'm calling you to say, hey. So you're watching all that for people, yes. like, kind of like somebody's a stock broker. They're it's, watching it for their people, and you're watching it it's for exactly your people. It's exactly the and same. They can lock in. Um, so would you, if you were to use an analogy, would it kind of be like leasing a car until, you know? It is, it is. You're, you're basically, in a sense, marrying the house and dating the rate is what a lot of people marrying like to say. Marrying the house and dating the rate. <laughs> yeah, the, the purpose of the arm is to be able to get into the house that you want to purchase your dream home, but at a lower interest rate so that you can have savings over that time period. And then whether it's a year or two years out before you're refinancing it, at that point, you're then locking in your fixed interest rate. So initially you're only dating the rate for a short period of time. But you don't want to go like, it's like we tell people that you know, you're know you under contract. You don't want to go out and buy a new vehicle. You don't want to go out and uh, spend a whole lot of money. As long as they're working on that arm, they still want to, you know, that's still not the time to go buy a new truck unless they're going to pay so it off or it's, something. it's during that period in between while you're in an arm loan and you're, you know that you have an end goal of refinancing that house into a lower interest rate. You don't want to make drastic changes to your debt to income levels or your credit score levels to help make sure that you're continually working towards that refinance. The best thing to do is whenever you're making any financial decisions is consult with your mortgage advisor. We're not just here for your mortgage, we're here for the long term as well. And we wanna make sure we're not just taking care of you with your current loan, but also preparing you for any future loans. And so any decisions that you're making, it's very simple to run it by your mortgage advisor to give myself a call and say, hey Drew, we're looking at buying a new truck, we're gonna trade in the old one. Our new payment is gonna be this, are we still safe with that? And it's very easy to look at those and make sure I'm keeping you protected for moving forward. So this isn't even just a one-time deal. This is like a lifetime, a lifetime lender in your... I try to be. Whenever I do a home loan for somebody, I look at it as for as long as they're with that house and in this area, I wanna make sure I'm taking care of their needs, not just with that house, but total service. You know, if they're needing to buy a new car, then we're working with them to help them qualify for that. All of their financial needs, because buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions you're going to make in your lifetime. So we want to make sure we're supporting you, not with just with that, but with the total picture of right. your life. So recently in um, the real estate business, I've been finding a lot of what they're 
these, um, the realtors, they are not actually even here. And I feel like I'm sort of being that seller's realtor because they wanted to save a few bucks and they're not local and they can't talk to them and they, you know, they can't get the keys. They can't do anything because the seller isn't here. The realtor isn't here, but you are here yes. and that's making you local. Um, and I love that. But what, what are your, uh, some of your thoughts you know, about the advantages? For I think there's a lot of advantage with when you're working with somebody local. The biggest thing is, is you have the ability to sit down face to face with them to discuss things and make sure you have a full understanding of everything that's going on with the home loan process. Sometimes that can be very difficult to do over the phone. Some people are okay with doing everything over the phone or via email, but anytime there's any aspect of a loan or purchasing a home that's a challenge, it's usually extremely beneficial to be able to sit down face-to-face -face with a realtor, their lender, with all parties involved in order to make sure they're still moving towards that end goal of buying that house and closing on that home loan. Um, well, I think we, you know, we covered about, um, I did want to talk to you a little bit about the unemployment rate and how that might affect. That's the only thing I can think of that about a bad thing about an, an arm or a negative thing is if, if the unemployment rate, but whatever is or isn't a healthy unemployment rate, you know, that's the, the experts don't really have so, an actual. Right now, the biggest factors that are affecting interest rates are inflation and the job index. And so when they look at those two things, they look at two main reports. They look at what they call the CPI report, which is the report on inflation. And we all know and have been hearing for some time that inflation just has gone up quite a bit and they're working hard to get inflation back down and under control. The other side of that coin is the jobs index report. And what they're looking at is how many job openings there are and where unemployment is. And unemployment's been at an all time low, which is great. It is, like for the United States right now, I believe that it's 3.4, which is just a little under 6 million people in there, right? 30, 332 million in the United States. And in Northwest Arkansas, I believe it's 3.6. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, if there's such thing as a healthy unemployment rate, that's kind of like an oxymoron. It kind of uh, is. You know, when it's you talk... between 3 and 5%. <laughs> so, you know. The, the hard thing to understand about the unemployment and the jobs index is, is it's not that we want unemployment to be higher, but on the flip side of that, when unemployment is very low, that means more people are making money. And when more people are making money, that means more people are spending money and that feeds into the inflation. And that's why they look at the two very heavily tied together. Uh, so, and the other aspect of that is how many job openings are available compared to how many are unemployed. So recently in the news, we've seen a lot of information about uh, Google laid off 17,000 people mm -hmm. or Amazon laid off 9,000 people. And so they look at those layoffs, but that doesn't necessarily factor into the unemployment directly because if there's 50,000 jobs available for those people who were recently laid off, then they may not be crossing over into that unemployment sector. Right. And so when that continued spending occurs, then you've got continuing addition to inflation. And that's mainly what they're focusing on trying to get under control. Mm -hmm. And so the risk there when you speak of the adjustable rate mortgages, the arm loans, is that you have to remember that you're only locked into that for a certain period of time. That interest rate is locked for three, five, or seven years, depending on the arm loan you go with. And so you have to be cautious and make sure you're discussing options with your lender to know where interest rates are now and what the timeline we're looking at is for interest rates to come back down. As you know, there's, there's no crystal ball, there's no solid prediction of interest rates will be here at what point. It's all very much educated guessing and understanding of what's happening with the market and predicting where that market's going to head to. So 
And when you say like you have a five year or three year or seven year arm, what happens at the end of that seven years and you can't make a move? Where does your loan go to then? Is it just so it's what happens is is if you get to the end of the seven year lock on an arm, then the first month of year eight, they do an analysis of where interest rates are in the market. Mm -hmm. And in comparison to your interest rate, they adjust it accordingly. So it can go up or it can go down. And whatever it goes to is going to stay that way for the following year. And in the first month of year nine, it would do it again. Now, earlier we say that it can go up as much as 2%, but that's only if interest rates in the market were 2% or higher than what your interest rate is. But if the interest rate zoomed up, they could zoom up. They, they could zoom down, up. They yeah. could zoom down. They could. So if you were on a 7-1 arm and you were locked at a 5.5%, then in seven years after that lock is over on the first month of year eight, interest rates would have to be at seven and a half percent in order for your interest rate to go up that high. If interest rates were at a 6%, you would only go up to that 6% because you stay within that margin of what interest rates are. If interest rates are less, you would go down accordingly. Now, if interest rates plummeted down to 3%, your rate would not go to 3%. It can only go down a certain degree. So it would go to the three and a half. Remember that 2% rule on the arms. So it can only adjust a certain amount, but there's always risk with an adjustable rate mortgage. So the plan is to never stay in that long term. The plan is to set that spike rate and make sure you're working with a lender who's going to watch that for you. Mm -hmm. Again, that's where working with somebody local really plays into effect right. because then that lender is reaching out to you and letting you know that, hey, we've hit that 4% margin. We've hit that spike rate that we set as a goal and it's time to get things ready to refinance your home loan so that we can lock you in for the remainder of it. Okay. And so that wouldn't, and we talked about um, to take when you would want to refinance your home. Mm -hmm. So um, at what percentage would you want it to be if your interest rates were to drop from, like, I don't think they're going back to 3% again. I no, think that was a I, fluke. I, um, well, I don't no, think they can. It, it, not um, quite a fluke. It was because of what was going on with the pandemic. And what happened was the Fed and the government were doing a lot of things to keep us from going into a recession. There were a lot of factors that played into that. There were rent moratoriums where uh, landlords could not raise rent. As, you know, there were uh, halts on student loan payments where all student loans were put into a deferment status so that you didn't have to make student loan payments during uh, mm -hmm. the pandemic to help save on spending. And then we experienced a, an economical boom during COVID in a lot of degrees. There were some degrees where we did not. There were jobs lost and there were uh, small businesses that suffered drastically because of it. But then the government enacted PPP loans and other factors to try and help stimulate the economy. And the hard thing was, was when we came out of that pandemic, all of these things that had been done kind of were like floodwaters and the floodgates were open and it came crashing in. And the inflation that occurred as a result of it is what push the interest rates up so high. And uh, so the, the low interest rates that we experienced during that were very much an anomaly. A healthy housing market really sees interest rates between about four and a six and a half percent, which is why I commonly say that 4% is a good marker for that spike rate because realistically, that's where we'll get back to when we're on the low side of interest rates. So that's really our, our, our goal as an economy, yes. as a country to, you know. That makes for a very healthy a housing health. market and a very healthy economy when interest rates are between four and six and a half percent. Okay. And the general rule to answer your question is that you're, when you're refinancing a home it, to save on interest, your general rule is that you want to save at least 1% on the interest rate. And that take care of all of your closing fees yeah. and all of Yeah, it, if you are at a 1% drop in interest rate and staying within the same term of loan, mm -hmm. then you're going to save money. It's going to be effective. 
Now, anytime you're in a 30 year mortgage and refinancing to a 20 or a 15 or a 10, that you don't need to drop your interest rate because you're saving dramatically on the interest overall on the life of the loan because you're cutting so many years off the loan. And then the other factor is, is when you're in an adjustable rate mortgage, you still want to set a low spike rate goal of what you want to get to, but because you're now locking it in and absolving that risk of your interest rate changing over time, it does not have to be as dramatic of a drop in interest rate. If you did an arm at a 5% and you were able to lock in at a 4.25, because that was the low, then that would, that would still That's save still good money interest rate. Yeah. because you're removing the risk of that 4.75 or 5% interest rate going up to 7 or 8%. Right. And so you are going to save in the long term. Because that that's what we statistically do, up and down and up and yes. down. Yeah. I remember when my parents bought homes, they were buying them at 14%. I remember oh, my yes. first home I was 9%. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. And, and that's a reality, you yeah. know, uh, for the way the housing market used to be. Luckily, there were a lot of things that were put in place to help avoid them getting so high again, but there is a risk of an interest rate on an arm going up to seven, eight percent very easily. We saw seven and a half percent interest rates in October and November of last year. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine if uh, someone locked in an interest rate of seven or seven and a half percent on a fixed rate, the amount of savings they could incur if they yeah. were then to refinance it at a four percent. Right. That would be a huge savings. That would be a huge, 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 huge savings. savings. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Well, Drew, I want to thank you. Do you have anything else that you wanted to cover we didn't cover? You know, I think the biggest thing is, is when you're looking at purchasing a home, is working with a realtor that you trust who's going to look out for you and take care of you during, guide you during the process of buying a home. But then the other added side of that is working with a lender who's going to do the same. And when you have a realtor and a lender who can work together, man, you've kind of got the dynamic duo there. You've got a team that is working for you who's looking out for making sure that you're finding the home that fits your needs and that is going to be that dream home. And then you've got a lender who's working to make sure that you're staying within margin of affordability and you're looking at the full picture and options available to maximize your savings and getting into that home. Right. That is the smartest way to make a big financial decision. And is also a stress-free way. Yes, to, it to is. To be able to walk into and just say, I, I know, I know because I've already spoken yes. with through. I've already spoken with you know, my lender. I, I know where I stand and it's just so powerful because I mean, I see um, offers that sellers and sellers can actually demand this. We do not want to look at offers that don't have a pre-approval. Yes. And, um, you know, I've seen people be, you know, turned away where I'm like, no, you really need that pre-approval. And they're like, yeah, but I don't want people pulling up my credit. And I'm like, you know, and I don't. Um, there, there's such a big advantage when you have a team that's working for you to guide you through something you're not as experienced and knowledgeable mm -hmm. in. You know, it'd be, you know, on the real, real estate side of things, I'm very limited on my knowledge with what you do on your side for home inspections and everything that you do with your buyers to help guide them through finding the right home. Mm -hmm. You know, my area of expertise is the loans and the numbers and helping guide them through that. And that's why you need both. You need the lender who's looking out for you, but you need the realtor who's looking out for you as well so that you are fully covered. You're right. protected in that You'll big a financial team of people. Yes, you a really do. People. And that's, um, that's what I rely on is, you know, my team of people and You're absolutely people that I right. can reach out to, you know, it's like, oh, I have this issue, you know, and not. Know somebody that I don't know from some call site someplace. Yes, when you've got that team working for you, then you're going to be safe and much more stress free during the process of buying a home. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for joining Drew and I this afternoon. Again, this is Drew Wack from um, United Federal Credit Union, um, Babette Russell from Come Home, the Better Homes and Gardens, and this is Getting Your Ducks in a Row. So let's go out and get some homes. It's going to be springtime soon. 
and everybody's going to be looking. And it's, it's the time to buy a home. Okay. Thank you for joining us.